my name's Lee. I work for Diddley Council um, in public health. I think if I stand behind here, you probably can't we see can't me. <laughs> Vertically challenged. Okay, so um, my talk today is about um, food growing in Dudley Borough. I'm going to present to you a few case studies of local community food projects and how we can learn from this and also want to take you through the development of the food growing strategy and let you know about the priorities that we've identified. Okay, so my main point to you, and I want to get across as quickly as possible because we've only got a few minutes, it's supposed to be a lightning talk. So my main point for you is to understand that there is a value and importance around food growing. Um, beneficial to the individual, to communities, to society in general, improving the economy and also enhancing the area that you live. Okay, so I've got a slide here. Um, is that going to work? Basically, listing the whole array of different benefits around food growing. I have linked it to the Dudley Council plan, so hopefully food growing can be part of the uh, future and vision of Dudley Council. Um, I'm hoping to um, provide stronger safe communities, growing the economy, and also a cleaner, greener uh, place. So this whole strong body of evidence here I hopefully will be part of the, the Dudley Council plan. So I'll just take you through the benefits very quickly. It can improve health and well-being for the individual. So both physical health and also improving mental health as well. So for example, increasing fruit and veg intake, improving physical activity levels, a reduction uh, of stress and uh, depression. It can also bring benefits to the community as well and to the society. Lots of projects have shown there's been a reduction in antisocial behaviour, increase in community cohesion and better social interaction between individuals and communities. Growing the economy, uh, creating new jobs. Now if you teach people some new skills, they may be able to pass this on. Now with food growing, it might not necessarily create lots of new jobs and bring a lot of um, material wealth or financial wealth, but you can use people as a resource. They're an asset there to be, to be utilised. They've got experience, they've got the skills, they've got knowledge that we can pass on to others. A lot of the community-led uh, projects are, well, are led by volunteers and local residents and actually unpaid workers can just add just as much value as paid employees. A cleaner and greener uh, place. You've probably heard a lot, I think, this morning. I missed quite a lot of the talks this morning, but there's a, a big link between outdoor space and uh, positive outcomes on health. Uh, the National Ecosystems Assessment in uh, 2011, which is an analysis report, which looked at the natural environment and its value on society. And it concluded that being outdoors, um, using green spaces, uh, being around your natural environment has a positive impact on human health and well-being. It's also a good catalyst for um, behaviour change and also to help people to adopt healthier lifestyles. Okay, so this strong body of evidence here, um, I think it deserves lots of attention from people um, from planning, planning policies, to um, uh, housing developments uh, and people who, who uh, work in that area. Also for health providers, health professionals, um, community groups and the voluntary sector. So if we want people to give them the opportunity to grow food in Dudley Borough, what do we need to do? Well, last year I started working on the Dudley uh, food growing strategy. So last year there was a consultation, meetings and a draft of the food growing strategy. I have to admit, the strategy has been drafted, redrafted, drafted, redrafted. And I'm at the final stages, but now I need your support and your help to help me get this through. And perhaps I want to take it back to the Health and Wellbeing Board, to the uh, Corporate Board of the, the Council, and hopefully get this adopted so that there is some clear governance structure for the food growing strategy. So with this piece of work that I've been involved in, it really identified lots of different growing projects happening in the area. Lots of enthusiastic individuals and community groups already uh, doing a lot of food growing. But, however, there wasn't any coordinated um, effort or goals or shared vision. And hopefully this strategy will pull this together. So the call to, ac call to action covers five key priorities. First one being to increase the number of food growing spaces. So that doesn't just necessarily mean building new uh, spaces and places. It's about maximising the use of, say, the allotments or getting people to grow in their own homes in the backyards. They don't need a massive space. It might be looking at um, people who um, have let their gardens overgrown. They can't manage them anymore. 
Could we explore looking at a garden sharing scheme, for example? Could we work with future um, housing developers? Can they make sure that they incorporate um, green space within their uh, housing developments, whether that's communal or uh, private space? Encourage all schools to grow food. So this is giving the chance for children and young people to learn about food growing and have the experience of food growing. They could perhaps link it back to their school food. Could they grow some food which will support their catering services, for example? Um, could they um, grow some fruit and vegetables which they can use for their cooking and curriculum, which is brought, being brought back into school? Um, thirdly, to improve the skills and knowledge of people in Dudley Borough in horticultural skills. It could be formal or informal. It could be taking part as a mentoring scheme, for example. Um, using food growing as a, as a tool to achieve wider benefits. So perhaps we could get um, GP practices to start food growing, perhaps prescribe gardening or food growing as part of their um, uh, healthcare intervention. What about food access and food poverty as well? Could we support um, the local food banks and be supplying them with uh, fresh foods? So at the moment, they rely very much on non-perishable um, items, so all tin foods and packet foods. And lastly, we need to promote the benefits borough-wide, I think. I think people know some of the benefits and think, oh, it's just about increasing fruit and veg intake. But I don't think it's just about having that end product, the fruit and veg, and having that and, and, and eating it. I think the process of getting that and achieving that gives people a sense of achievement and uh, well-being. Okay, so I just want to show some uh, case studies, about three of them. I could have shown more, but um, I was reduced to having just five slides, so I have put some of the case studies together on one slide. So the first one there, Derby End Gardens and Allotment in Netherton. Does anybody know it? Anybody aware of it? Some nods, mostly knows, but okay. Mm -hmm. This is in Netherton. Um, that chap there is John Mason. He's the chair of the Residents and Tenants Association. Um, this is a site which is a disused garage site. It's been left empty, redundant for, I think, 38 years. Um, that's this is what he told me last week. So that's a long time to be left, um, dis not, not utilised. So um, this is a great example of partnership working between the council and I think the housing department who helped them get the planning permission through. They also got some funding to um, get the site renovated. And this disused garage site was an eyesore. They had kids hanging around, smoking and drinking. So now they've turned it into 13 plots, now rented out to local residents and also a local school which comes in weekly to use it. Um, and the school also has contributed some of the funding as well to help with the, with the renovations. So um, that's a really good example um, of, of, of a good community project. And I think the enthusiasm and drive comes out from, from John there. I think he's been the main person who's driven this forward with the help of the local residents. The second project is the Amblecote allotments in Stourbridge. Do you know, does anybody know the, the allotments? Okay. Do you have an allotment there, I think? No, no. <laughs> It's quite a, a large site. A lot of the allotments are, have been taken, but thankfully the Chinese Community Association, they applied for it. They were on the waiting list for a little while. At the same time, they had to get a little bit of funding. They got a couple of grand from the big lottery, um, and they were successful with that, so they built a shed. Um, they, 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 obviously, it was, quite overgrown, it was quite overgrown, and it gets quite overgrown quite easily. So somebody had left it, couldn't manage it anymore, and thankfully, the, this group was on, on that waiting list. Now, it's unusual for an allotment association to, to rent out a plot to um, a community group, a shared group. They're worried about who's going to take the lead, who's going to take the lead responsibility. But through negotiations, they've broken down some, a few barriers. They've actually uh, let them rent out a, a particular plot. They're, and they've started to grow their own vegetables here. Um, this started in August 2014. And there's a core group who meet on a weekly or more basis. And I think um, this is a really good example of um, improved uh, community cohesion there. They've actually started to interact with their neighbours uh, in, in the allotments. And uh, the community development worker has told me now that they see the, the point in, in the food growing and um, adopting healthier lifestyles and being outdoors. It's really, really difficult to get the Chinese community to, to get outdoors. They somehow like to get, uh, stay indoors quite a lot of the time. And I think the, it's a good example of community engagement and development as well. My third example is Jasmine Road Community Gardens. Anybody know about this gardens? A few show of hands. Yeah, yeah. 
It used to be hillside herbs, used to be part of St. Thomas's Network. Unfortunately, as well, St. Thomas's Network will be closing down as an organisation at um, the end of September. Um, hillside herbs um, also closed down um, in July 2014. But with the, the strength and the commitment and enthusiasm of the volunteers who work on that site, managed to um, uh, get <coughs> reopened back in September 2014. So over the time of the closure, things got a bit overgrown, but the volunteers kept that going. They went in, they re rebuilt the raised beds, they applied for some funding from Comic Relief, they got a bit of money. And it's now the most liveliest and active it's ever been, I have to say. In my years, I've uh, uh, been there and visited them. Um, it, it's, just, it's just a fantastic uh, uh, space. They've got an outdoor earth oven, um, they've got an, a staging area which is in progress being built. So they're going to hold lots of different activities um, throughout the year, particularly in the summer. So watch out um, for them. They're also um, very much a community-led project. They set up a friends group. Um, and I think the only, the only way they could continue with this is through this particular group. Um, and they are now applying for charity status. So please um, support them. They have plant sales on, and I think every Saturday or every Monday I've got leaflets in the back of my car. So go and visit them and, uh, and buy a few plants. And I think, again, it's a great example of um, a great volunteer scheme uh, working here as well. So tying in very much around uh, what Peter was talking about with the volunteers and what they get from this. Some of, it, some of this, these projects are lifeline um, to people living the, within those areas. Okay, so moving on. So we've got food growing projects. We've got a strategy in place, hopefully to be adopted soon. We've got um, established community healthy cooking sessions. Uh, they're called Get Cooking and Fun with Food. They help people learn new skills and be able to cook healthy meals for themselves and their families. Um, we've also got uh, support and training and an award scheme for um, caterers, Dudley Food for Health Award. Um, so all these things are going on. We've also got Let's Get, which is our, our uh, website, our council website for uh, helping people to eat well and be active in Dudley Borough. So how do we link all this together? Just put my arrows on there. Um, my proposal is to connect communities with food. Using food has a theme. Everybody has to eat. Um, everybody likes food. Um, so we want to connect all these different things together. So growing, cooking, shopping, eating out, healthy eating. So my idea is to uh, set up some sort of dialogue, an exchange of knowledge with people who are interested and who care about food and nutrition. Perhaps the way I would start doing this is to look at the shops who are participating in the, in the Shop Healthy project. So they're now promoting and selling healthier produce. Now, can we work with the shops and look at the locality around them, do some mapping around the community assets, the people there, but also the geographical um, assets there, the green spaces, um, the amenities and facilities that are available to us. Can we work with the schools and the GP practices within, within that area? So, for example, if there is a, a cooking session uh, going on there, get cooking se uh, session, uh, could that take part in a school, community centre? Could they then shop at that particular shop and get their healthy produce for the healthy cooking sessions? Could the local growers or allotments or just local people growing, could they actually supply the, some of the fruit and vegetables? for the healthy cooking sessions. So this idea might, it might seem quite far off into the distance, but I think it's also a, a project that's, that's probably calling out for a more coordinated approach and probably going back to uh, what Lorna was talking about, about co-design and co-delivering with the communities there. Um, I think it, it needs a, a very uh, co-production co -produc co approach here. So I'm going to finish my presentation, leave you with those thoughts. If you have any suggestions, idea, want to take part in the Connecting Communities with Food, if you want to have a look at the food growing strategy, I'll be more than welcome to send that over to you. I've got my details just on the, on the left there. Thank you very much. She worked in the north part of, the, of Dudley Borough, um, and she was telling me about a fire station in Tipton that started doing some food growing, and to take that as, a, as an approach. 
Yes, it is. It's only a pet tree. That's it, yes. Now that you've reminded me, yes, we've had a chat. They're trying to look for a bit of funding at the moment, and they're looking for an ideal a space to grow food. That's where we're at with the, the fire service there. Identify um, and put on a map, uh, hopefully, a list of potential food growing spaces. I think it is quite a long process to have a look and identify and see if it's suitable for food growing. But I think if we want to take a more co productive sort of approach, we need to start some conversations first with the people who utilise that car park who live in that specific area and to start a dialogue to see what would people want to use and utilise that space for. They might not want to use it and turn it into a, a food growing space. They might want to use it as a different type of space. But I think hopefully the, the council's push will be, and that's why I need a strategy to be in place, because once that's in place, it means we can start looking at these different ideas and different areas where we can actually potentially uh, put in some food growing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Okay. Thank you.